Hi, I'm John Paul from Power by Nature. Now, in my previous videos, I have set up a solar-powered charging station. Now, just to recap, we have a 60-watt solar panel outside in the garden. Um, the wire is basically at the moment coming through the window, um, which then hooks into the charge regulator to make sure it doesn't uh, overcharge anything. Um, at the minute this is showing high voltage because we have some sun for a change. That obviously in turn is charging the battery and connected to the battery is the inverter. Now when I first bought this battery um, I was a little concerned that I couldn't tell if the battery was fully charged or not. Now there is a indicator on the battery which is meant to go green when it's fully charged. However, it's absolutely rubbish and you can't see if it's fully charged or not. So the first thing I did was I bought a little device which has a couple of wires and the whole idea is you hook it onto the positive and negative of the battery and in turn the LEDs on there will light up and obviously the last green would mean fully charged and the red is means that the battery just isn't charged, it's nearly empty. Now this little device, um, I've tried a few times, I've tried putting some connectors on the actual wires as well and it's been absolutely hopeless. All it ever does is show that it's flashing red so it's trying to tell me that the battery is constantly dead. Now obviously this was a bit of a concern at the time because I've paid quite a fair bit of money for everything. Um, so what I've done is I've invested in some different devices. So this was just rubbish. So the first thing I bought was a digital multimeter, um, sort of, you know, box, box standard digital multimeter. Um, as soon as this is connected to the battery, as soon as I've got the um, positive to positive and negative to negative, um, it comes up at just over 13 volts, I think it's about 13.1, um, which basically means that the battery is fully charged, so that was a bit of a relief. What I've done since then, just so I don't have to keep using the multimeter, is I've bought another battery tester. Now this battery tester was uh, £13 from eBay, which is, to me it is quite expensive for what it is. It's a tiny little device that's just measuring the, the resistance there. So, But the good thing is, it does work. You press a button and it straight away tells me that the battery's full. And it was very simple to connect, but again, it was just two wires, um, positive and negative, connected to the positive and negative uh, studs, uh, and just a little button that you just press, and it'll light up and say, yep, yeah, it's fully charged. So, what we're going to look at today is we know the battery and the inverter, and um, anything connected to the inverter will basically charge up. So I've already tried a... Samsung Galaxy tablet, I've tried a Atom laptop, mobile phones, um, everything charges up without a bit of bother, which is what this is all about. So now what I need to do is I need to start looking at some larger items to see if they will run. So what we're doing is we're going to go around the kitchen today and we're going to see if we can find a few devices just to try and see what we can and can't run from this inverter and this solar powered charging station. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the kitchen table. I found a couple of devices to try first off and we'll see what happens. Okay so here we are at the kitchen table. Now in case you're wondering, um, what I've done is obviously we can't, well rather than trying to work over where everything is set up which there isn't a lot of space, I've basically plugged in a extension um, into the inverter so obviously I can come over to the kitchen table and we can try some various things. So the first thing I noticed I haven't looked at was a cordless drill. Now I really don't think there's going to be any problem charging it but I haven't tried it so we might as well give it a quick shot. So this is all plugged in and turned on so as soon as I plug it in as you can see red light on means it's charging. Um, this is just a standard 18 volt cordless drill, there's nothing special about it. So I do know now that this will be charged from the solar panels, which is great. It's all about saving money. Now, getting into something a little bit more interesting. We have an electric whisk. Now, 
I haven't obviously put in the attachments because I'm testing and I don't want to do myself some injuries. Um, one thing to note and one thing to be aware of is if you're going to plug anything into the inverter, you must make sure it's within um, its limit. Now the inverter is a 2000 watt inverter. So the theory is if anything is under 2000 watts, you can plug it in and it should work fine. Um, the electric whisk here is 280 watts, so that's obviously well within the limit. So easiest thing to do is we plug it in and we'll give it a try. And as you can see, it works absolutely no problem. So something you can run from the solar panel and the battery is our electric whisk. Now, something slightly bigger. The toaster. Now it's quite a big toaster. Um, it's a four slice toaster. Now I've only checked the wattage on this and the wattage is 1400. So we are getting a little bit closer to its limit. Now, I haven't tried this, so I don't know if it's going to work. It could explode. I might be running around trying to put a fire out in a minute. I don't know. So, plugged in. First thing to do, there's no toast in at the minute. I'm just going to cancel it if it does work. It's working. Plenty of heat and plenty of noise. Right, now, with both of them down there, I could actually hear the inverter beeping, which probably means it's actually drawn too much power, um, so there's a good chance that the inverter was going to just cut out. So with one down, although very noisy, which I'm not quite sure why, the inverter can handle that fine. With both down, it's obviously going to struggle, and it's going to, um, well, it's either going to, the, the inverter will cut out as it, as it should do, because it's designed to do that, and if it doesn't do that, it'll basically just die and just probably catch fire and set the house alight. Which I don't think my wife would be too happy about. So other than that, so I mean that is quite a big toaster. Um, I'm a bit surprised that it can't cope very well, well the inverter can't cope very well with that. Um, so that's something obviously to look at. I mean this was rated, I think I said 1,400 watts uh, and with a 2,000 watt inverter. So it's obviously something to bear in mind. You've got to look at the devices that you are going to run from the um, solar panel setup. Now I would have liked to have run this permanently from it, but I guess I can't do that on the current setup. So whether or not I need a larger inverter um, or a smaller toaster is, um, well, I just don't know yet. I guess I'll have to find that out. Um, I would have liked to have tested the kettle but I can't because the kettle is rated at 2,500 watts to 3,000 watts, um, which is quite a lot when you think about it. I think the whole idea behind the, the higher powered kettles is the higher the power, the quicker the boil, um, which in turn, the quicker the boil, it means it's not using the electricity for as long. However, if I suppose I bought a kettle that was running under 1000, well sorry, under 2000 watts, then in theory I should be able to run it direct from the inverter. But judging by just what, what's happened here with the, um, with the toaster, um, I might have to look into that a little bit more. So what we're going to do next time is I'm going to try and find some much larger devices to run. Now I do have a lawnmower which is rated at 1400 watts so I might give that a shot. Thank you.